Today, I'm gonna quickly talk about the ending of Nosedive, while adding some clarity to the overall story. So no doubt there will be spoilers ahead for the entire episode. Charlie Brooker originally came up with the idea for Nosedive, and created a brief outline for what he had envisioned. In this outline, Brooker was going for more of a dark comedy, so it made sense that Rashida Jones and Michael Schur ended up writing the script, as they both worked on shows like Parks and Rec together, giving another reason as to why this is the first Black Mirror episode with no British accents. In Nosedive, we follow a woman named Lacey Pound, living in a world where everyone rates each other on a scale of 1 through 5, and the average rating of the individual determines their way of living, as it appears that anyone who is below a certain score has a pretty much miserable existence. Lacey has a score of a 4.2, and wants to live in a nice neighborhood with a nice husband and have a nice life, but she can't afford it. However, if she gets her score up to a 4.5 or higher, she can apply for a 20% discount on her new home. When Lacey gets invited to speak at her childhood friend's wedding in front of a bunch of quality people. She sees her opportunity to get a boost that will bring her rank up to a 4.5. The network their society is using is resembling apps like Facebook and Instagram, with an Uber driver type of rating system of 1 to 5 stars, instead of a heart or a like. But for the most part, people either rate each other 1 or 5 stars, so it's pretty much the equivalent of an upvote or downvote system on sites like Reddit, or someone just always hearting their friend's pics on Instagram no matter what their post is. With this system sharing so many similarities with the Uber ratings, Bryce Dallas Howard, who plays Lacey, and Alice Eve, who plays Naomi, did an experiment to see what their own Uber driver ratings would be. After asking their Uber drivers what their ratings were, Bryce was a 4.8 and Alice was a 4.5. So Bryce got the score that Alice's character Naomi had, and Alice got the score Bryce's character Lacey was striving towards. I just thought that was pretty great. Bryce Dallas Howard gained 30 pounds for this role, as Lacey's weight is a very important part of her character. At the wedding and in earlier versions of her speech, Lacey talks about how she used to be overweight and how she was bulimic. Knowing that she used to weigh more, it makes sense that we see Lacey going out for jogs all the time, as she's always improving on herself. This is also hinting at the demand to have the perfect figure, something that most women and men who use social media are subjected to. Body shaming is a big part of the subtext in Nosedive. So like real world social media, in the world of Nosedive, there is a pressure of looking your best all the time. Time, as you're constantly being shown others looking their best all the time, making you compare yourself to others constantly, which can take a toll on your emotional health and negatively affect how you determine your self-worth. Since they were young, Lacey had always aspired to be like Naomi, which caused her to struggle with an eating disorder. And during Lacey's speech in the end of the episode, she thanks Naomi for holding her hair back as she knelt vomiting in front of the toilet. Naomi didn't help Lacey recover from being bulimic, the only help she did was hold holding Lacey's hair back, which is pretty messed up as she was supporting her eating disorder. This pressure to have the perfect body was shown to us through the video calls in some very subtle and not so subtle ways. Like when Naomi and Lacey first start video chatting, Naomi's headroom is cut off so the framing of her shot can show off a lot of her cleavage. Pretty much the top piece of her swimsuit is the main focus of the shot, which continues throughout the entire call as she just keeps that swimsuit in the frame no matter what, showing huge parallels to live streamers and the way a lot of selfies are taken. Then in the second video chat between the two of them, Naomi starts doing yoga workouts exactly like in the pictures we saw of her earlier in the episode, showing us that what is happening in the call is completely staged, as she purposefully had to hit the call button and then start posing. It's not like she was getting called in the middle of a workout. Then Naomi just makes the assumption for the size of the dress Lacey is gonna wear, as she gives her a size 4. And for those of you who don't know what a size 4 in women's is, a size 4 is an extra small, and pretty much the smallest you can get, something that Lacey was too insecure to say no to. Nosedive was the perfect name for the episode, as one poor rating caused her to do a nosedive, as she suffered from a snowball effect. For example, if Lacey didn't get in a fight with her brother, she wouldn't have been late for her ride, and then get a low rating for making her driver wait. And if she didn't give her brother a low rating, he wouldn't have retaliated with giving her a low rating as well. And if she didn't miss her first ride, or get held up from giving her brother a a low rating, she wouldn't have ran into the woman and receive a downvote for making that 4-8 spill a drink all over herself. And if Lacey wasn't annoying in the cab ride and didn't tip her driver with a 5-star rating, she wouldn't have received a 1-star from him. The things that kept her off the waiting list and made her miss the other flight. However, if Lacey just left the airport without yelling at anyone and not giving the airport stewardess any sass, she wouldn't have been given double damage. She would have gotten the right car and she could have still managed to make it to the wedding. And quick 
Side note, the incident at the airport caused Lacey's rating to be brought down to a 3.1, which means that Lacey would have never been able to get into the wedding after that. Because to get into the area where the wedding was being held, there was a minimum entry of 3.8 with no exceptions. Anyway, this butterfly effect shows us the sheer lack of empathy that comes with the system, and how people can manipulate rankings for some enjoyment. When Lacey's co-worker Chess splits up with his boyfriend Gordon, Lacey initially said poor Chess, but was told everyone chose Gordon's side, to which then she reluctantly replies with sure, obviously. We later see Chess get locked out of his work, because he is a 2.4 and the doors won't open for anyone below a 2.5. This shows us that anyone can really just use the system for the greater good, as everyone can benefit from it, which is what her brother does with his gaming friends. We are even shown that you can make anonymous votes. So Lacey was very capable of giving Chess some votes to get back into the building, but it was fear of people seeing or knowing that she sided with an outcast who everyone else ganged up on. Like a more personal version of the mob mentality from Hated in the Nation. Later Lacey finds herself in the same situation. Her score got brought down from the cab driver, the spilt drink, and her brother, bringing her rank just below low 4.2, not allowing her to get on a waiting list. The airport stewardess could have easily given her a 5 star rating. The people behind her could have given her an upvote as well. As proof that this was a possibility, we see the stewardess intentionally go out of her way to downvote Lacey after the situation was resolved, and she was being removed from the airport. Which by the way, Michaela Cole who plays the stewardess, also plays Shania in USS Callister. Nobody in their society really helps each other. This is just to further emphasize how much of a classist system it is. Because in this world, your score dictates your overall value as a human being. As we get a harsh example of Susan's husband Tom being a 4.3 and the hospital giving up his bed to a 4.4, Lacey ends up going down the same path as Chess. Chess offers her a smoothie when he's scared of getting a low rating from everyone. And then we see Lacey offering Bethany a croissant when she is scared of getting a low rating herself. The two scenes of Lacey being denied a flight and Chess being denied entry into his work mirror each other so well, as they subtly reference the capitalist society we have in America, which a common mindset of some of the wealthy in the United States is that the people who are struggling are only struggling because they deserve to. They can easily help the poor out, but don't, because the poor should just work harder or stop being poor, giving themselves validation to be greedy. And speaking of greed, something I found really interesting about the rating system is that the importance of your vote is determined by your rank, meaning the people who are for point fives or higher will be able to upvote or downvote someone and significantly affect their score more than someone with a lower rating than them. Lacey surrounds herself with mid to low range folks and is told that she needs to expand on these circles and that she has a ton of reciprocal five stars from service industry workers but that apparently is not good enough showing us that the system is rigged from the start as the rich and anyone above something like a 4.7 can stay in their own closed off circles and keep their lifestyles by upvoting each other while well, anyone with a less score cannot progress due to their inner and outer circles being mid to low range folks. So the poor can stay poor and the rich can stay rich. Out of all the Black Mirror episodes, this one was the hardest for me to make it through. Not because this episode did such a good job of making you cringe at Lacey's desperate attempts to seek approval and validation from everyone, but because I never related more to an episode of Black Mirror. I'm someone who really likes being a creator on YouTube. So the society Lacey lives in and a lot of the stuff she says makes me really dead inside. When talking about numbers and ratings, I compare myself to other YouTubers all the time. And I know so many other YouTubers out there like myself who really want to get to 100k, referring to the subscriber amount. And no doubt this feeling also applies to anything like getting followers on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, MySpace, Twitch, and so on and so on. I've heard a lot of other creators say almost verbatim the same kind of stuff that Lacey was telling Susan, that she needs enough to just be content. And she just needs to play the numbers game, so that once she reaches a certain number, then she can be content and just relax. But this won't be and will never be the case. If you compare yourself to others, you'll never be content, because you will always think someone has more than you or has something that you don't have. A good example of this would be that Lacey's living situation is pretty good by today's standards, but she refers to it as a cave. And then she wants to upgrade to a place that is not too different, but just a little nicer and way more expensive. This episode does a good job of showing that Lacey is addicted to momentary pleasure that comes with the app. Much like how we get momentary pleasure from upvotes, likes, and hearts on other applications. She wants so badly for everyone to upvote her, and for the most part, people
people like Naomi will sometimes rate a 4 and others will give like a 2. But Lacey is always giving out 5s. When she gets an upvote, she feels good for like a second, but then reverts back into the real world, where she is still stressed out and desperately wanting the next rating. In her world, which is just one big manifestation of the social media we have nowadays, when it's not about her appearance, it's about selling her a lifestyle that she thinks she wants but doesn't necessarily need. The pastel color scheme of the episode made everyone and everything look fake and plastic-like. Everything in their world is so clean and perfect, like a lot of Instagram photos and blogs, representing how artificial their world is in terms of social interaction, but also showing us how materialistic everyone is, and how this lifestyle is one big product being sold to them. Lacey's mindset is that she'll be okay if she buys a nice house that she can barely afford, to one day get a man in her life, all from hitting a certain number. But Naomi is a prime example that this goal of being content will never happen in this kind of lifestyle. As Naomi just wants Lacey to speak at her wedding, because the authenticity of having a 4.2 speak worked really well for her in the simulation she was running. For Naomi, it was still about maintaining or improving on her ranking. Even though she was above a 4.8, much higher than the rank Lacey was aiming for, this falls under the hedonic treadmill, which explores the idea that if you're someone who suddenly gains a higher income, it comes with higher expectations and establishes new wants and desires. So no matter what big event or major change happening to you, whether it's negative or positive, you'll always return back to the same stable level of happiness, explaining that the goal of being content is impossible to achieve. If you are relying on being permanently content once you've accomplished that one thing you were supposedly wanting to do, and there is no correlation between using social media and long-term happiness, since most popular social media sites and apps are designed like gambling machines, making you crave the next like, heart, upvote, or five-star rating like Lacey. There is a red pill, blue pill reference in Nosedive, and for those of you who didn't watch The Matrix and are unfamiliar with the concept, the red pill will show you freedom and the truths of reality, while the blue pill will allow you to stay ignorant and be happy in the illusion that you're living in. When Lacey gets into Susan's truck, Susan offers her a drink saying blue thermos is coffee and red's whiskey. Susan ends up giving the red thermos to Lacey by sneaking it in her bag, and the moment where Lacey tells the drink heads in the RV, I've never seen your stupid f show is the moment Lacey is done putting on a performance for people. So she drinks the red thermos on the highway to signify that she took the path of reality and freedom, as she jumps in front of traffic demanding a ride, finally yelling at people and being assertive. Earlier in the episode with her and Susan's encounter, Susan says it feels good telling people the truth and being honest with them, but most people don't necessarily like it. When Lacey is giving the speech at the wedding, she is no doubt having a complete breakdown, but she always looked up to Naomi, and she wanted to be just like her. So Lacey put up with a lot. So this speech is just Lacey letting out all of this resentment, an issue she had with Naomi and was always wanting to address, but never could because she wanted to be accepted and well-liked. Finally coming out and saying that she Greg, speaking the truth, as the delivery of her speech is as messy as she looks. When Lacey is screaming, I love you, Nene, she is actually saying that she forgives her, because Lacey is finally able to rant about all of Naomi's wrongdoing, but because of this, she is able to move on, and chooses to remember the friend that talked to her when she was scared, and helped her make Mr. Regs. When talking about the inspiration for the episode, Be Right Back, Charlie Brooker stated that when he was on social media sites like Twitter, he found himself being inauthentic on there, and it reminded him of writing columns for a newspaper. Most people, including myself, fall into the same trap of not being genuine and lacking all authenticity when talking to each other through a screen. The real life encounters are so cringy and nosedive, because their words sound like they're taken straight out of a conversation between two people always saying to each other, hey we should catch up or we should hang out, but never actually get around to it because they don't mean what they're saying, and they don't necessarily care for the other person. Brooker also mentioned that he had to ration his Twitter usage, as it was the cause for a a lot of his unhappiness. When Lacey is arguing with her brother over the need to live at Pelican Cove, he claims that they are fake smile jail cells. After the wedding, Lacey's rating becomes so low that it's basically non-existent. Instead of ending up in a fake smile prison cell with her virtual really good looking husband, she ends up in a prison cell with a really good looking man who physically exists in the prison cell across from her. Lacey couldn't have said it better herself. As she says, in this world we're all caught up in our own heads. It's easy to lose sight of what's real, what matters. 
matters. The kind of peaceful piano music that plays in the prison cell is the same kind of music we hear playing in the scene where she's watching everyone around her at the cafe. Instead of fake people on their devices in a setting of artificial peacefulness, she is looking at dust particles in the air, signifying the change of perspective and appreciation for an entirely different part of life. When looking at the dust particles, Lacey laughs, and it looks better than any laugh she was practicing in the mirror, because this one is genuine. She cries authentic tears, unlike the one she had when she was practicing for her speech. The prison has a gray color palette, lacking the pastel color scheme, an area free of the fake culture we've seen throughout the episode. Lacey sheds the last pastel colored piece of clothing, and the last connection to the artificial society she was trying so hard to be a part of. When Lacey takes the dress off to where she is just wearing her bra, it's the most of her body we see all episode. She is finally comfortable with herself to be revealing like Naomi, no longer ashamed of her body or weight. Lacey and the man in the cell next to her are now free to say whatever they want without consequence, showing us that these two people in their prison cells are more free than the rest of their world. And that was all I had to say about Nosedive. This is hands down one of the most important Black Mirror episodes, especially how this terrifying concept is becoming the reality in China with the new social credit system they're implementing right now and they want to have fully implemented by 2020. And let me tell you, it is something straight out of 1984. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about or just want to find out more information, I put some really good articles on China's social credit system in the description below. I highly recommend you check them out as you'll find a lot of similarities between the social credit system and nosedive, with people being denied transportation caused by their score, and how their inner and outer circles also affect their ranking. And the list just keeps going on and on, it's f***ing terrifying. I really like knowing that Anne Perkins wrote half this episode, and I also find it cool that this episode was shot in South Africa, which is where they also shot my favorite episode, San Junipero. And if you guys love Black Mirror, check out my playlist for my Black Mirror and Explain videos. And please give me a 5 star rating by liking this video and subscribing so I can feel some self worth. And in all seriousness, you guys are awesome. And these are my favorite kind of YouTube videos that I've ever made on my channel. And I cannot wait to take on season 5. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next Black Mirror Ending Explained. <laughs>